it's great to be together. Uh, the singing sounds amazing. And uh, I too noticed Sydney singing up uh, or dancing up here after her operation. So her prayers have been answered. Hopefully she'll continue in her recovery. And uh, it's just exciting to be together. Uh, next week, as you know, we're going to be starting uh, the book of John and going through that. And so today was kind of a free week where, you know, every preacher loves a free week, right? Where you can just kind of go for whatever. And uh, I kind of had, I believe uh, God put some things on my heart this week uh, that really uh, it was going one direction. And then Tuesday it radically changed. And you'll get to see that in a minute. Uh, but we're going to talk today, uh, it's called Made by God. And we're going to go, be coming from the book of Nehemiah. Right. And uh, also talking some about the Middle East and talking about building up the wall here in the desert. And uh, as you think about uh, the wall uh, that, that Nehemiah was about ready to build, and many of you have heard the story, but I believe that his, this story represents all of our lives. That we're trying to build something, and we're trying to build uh, something that starts at home. You know, as they went out to begin to build the wall, they started to build by their own house. And you can imagine the care that you would put into building the wall by your own house. That, man, if they're going to come into the city, I don't want them coming in on my front door. You know, I don't want them messing with my wife or my spouse or my marriage or my kids right. you know and there was an incentive and I believe for all of us we're building God's wall in our lives Amen. and it starts at home right. it starts with yourself it starts with your family it starts with your with your the people in your family group the ones that are closest to you you know for us as a church it, 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 we're a part of God's wall around the world and we're going to be talking about uh, the Middle East today as well. And as we were watching that video a while back, uh, during the beginning of the service about preteen camp, you know, before we moved here, we didn't, I didn't really know that Desert Cities kind of drives the whole preteen camp. Yeah. You know, the rest, it's kind of a secret from all the L.A. church. It's not like we walk, you guys walk in with a sign and saying, we make camp happen. <laughs> Uh, but when I went there last year, I realized, you know, from, from the mantles in the IE that really you guys have made camp happen for so many kids. And I was just even getting emotional looking at the kids singing, you know, seeing Isabel singing and seeing Brooke make a fool of herself with that thing on her head. And, you know, just giving your whole hearts to God and see people running around. And, you know, I know the, the Meckhamsons have had a huge role, but just... Man, doesn't it feel amazing when you know that God is using you to impact lives, to see kids change for eternity? I mean, that, that gets me excited. That, I hope that that gets you going. And so we're talking about building not just God's wall, but building your wall, something that God wants to use each one of us. And let's start off with a prayer. Uh, Father, I pray that you speak to us today through your word. God, that you speak to us through your spirit, that you lead us. God, I know that everyone here is so needed and loved and adored by you. I know that you have a purpose for each one of our lives. God, I pray that you use us, that you get us out of the way, that we can be used by you. I pray that in the next minutes that you can move our hearts uh, like never before to be a part of building something great for you. God, we love you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 My point number one, build the walls. And we're going to kick it off with Nehemiah chapter one. The words of Nehemiah, son of Halakiah, in the month of Kislev in the 20th year when I was in the citadel of Susa. Hananiah, one of the brothers, came from Judah and some, with some other men. And I questioned him about the Jewish remnant that had survived the exile, and also about Jerusalem. They said to me, those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates have been burned with fire. 
When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. This was a day that Nehemiah was not expecting, but changed his walk with God forever. He was having a normal day, and Hananiah showed up, and he realized that there was trouble. You know, they had been back in Jerusalem. They had been sent away because of their sin, and they went back almost 50 years later. Zerubbabel went back. And 70 years later, the temple was finished, and they were so excited, and they dedicated it to the, to the Lord. And then Ezra went about 50 years later, and they had lost their heart for God. That they needed a re reawakening. And then 13 years after this reawakening, he finds out that the temple, almost a hundred, over a hundred, almost a hundred years later, that the walls and the gates are still not rebuilt. You know, we might hear that and we go, well, that's, so what? The walls aren't built. The gates aren't built. Who cares? What does that mean? To them, that was a sign of disgrace. That your city, that God's people were defenseless against attacks. That you couldn't even hold out your enemies. That you weren't secure. That you weren't blessed by God because your city was a ruin. That you would walk in and out and remember the sin that you were in and not care enough to take action. And so, Nehemiah, you know, had pictures of the wall and just broken down and the fires that burnt it down. A hundred years earlier, still rained, that it still wasn't fixed. You know, that was the wall that Nehemiah cared about. You know, he wasn't putting himself before the nation. He was putting the nation and God's people before himself. Amen. You know, it's a rather new phenomenon that we have here in America where we think about God through ourselves. How do I feel about God? What is my experience? How is my worship? What is God saying to me? You know, for thousands of years, people saw God through what He was doing through all of us. That when you hurt, it affected me. When the people of God hurt, I was depressed like Nehemiah. You know, if I'm really honest, there's a lot of times when I hear about the spiritual condition of others. And in my heart of hearts, I go, man, I'm so glad that's not my family. You know, as depressing as it is, I think in my heart, man, I'm glad that's not me that's going through that. And yet, that wasn't Nehemiah's heart. He was good. He had a great job. He was, in a, he was set. But that wasn't enough. You know, when you think about the wall that we're building here in the desert, it's not just enough for one of us to do well. For one ministry to do well. For one family to do well. You know, I'm a part of the youth and family ministry, but I don't want the campus to do bad. Here's a picture of the campus back at the Harvest Festival. You know, if you remember back in this time, there was a serious challenge with the wall in the campus. That there was a lot of needs that, there was, that weren't being met and there were some faithful people that were there that were waiting to be used by God and now we start to see God building up that part of the wall and we all rejoice. Amen. And there's challenges and there's opportunities for faith. But that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the wall that we're building. The wall that we're a part of. You know, if the campus doesn't do well, yeah, that does hurt. Why? Because we know people in the campus. We know Aaron. We know Ariel. We know Jordan. We know JR. We know these people. They're, they're family. Right. Let's keep reading. In verse 5. It says, Then I said, Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps His covenant of love, 
to, with those who love him and keep his commandments. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants. The people of Israel. I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's family, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly towards you. We have not obeyed your commands, decrees, and laws you gave your servant, Moses. See, Nehemiah's heart, when he hears about the wall being broken down, he takes responsibility for him, personal responsibility. Remember, that wasn't him. He wasn't there. But that was a result of his spiritual people and where they had been and where they had gone. You know, God was putting on his heart a spiritual dream. But it took the, the feeling and emotion. You know, as I was reading through this, these chapters, I realized that we are Nehemiah. In every one of our lives right now, there is a, a gate that is burnt down. There is an area that if I started asking you about it, it would, it would make you feel like, man, I'm a failure spiritually. I have totally blown it in this area. Maybe it's your finances. You know, you hear Dave Ramsey go, man, I am totally, I don't even know, I can't even hardly call myself a Christian. Maybe it's your purity. Maybe it's your anger with your spouse. Go, man, if, I, if they just only knew what we talked about at home. I don't know what it is for you. You know, this year we've talked in our family a lot about faith and finances. And man, it's been one after the next. And every time I come up here, it's something new. And I see, man, it's a challenge. And I see how out of control I am. Not because I'm not trying to be in control, but because God is the one who's in control. And I try to fix everything and figure it all out, and I, only to realize, man, I'm making a mess. As much as I'm trying. And it hurts. You know, this week we, uh, we had a discussion in our staff meeting about special missions contribution. I was going to get to that later, but why is it old now? And we're thinking, okay, you know, here's one of the topics we're going to discuss. We kind of throw out topics and we start discussing. And one of the brothers said, well, I think we're going to be a little short this week. I mean, this, this year. And we all kind of sat there and we kind of went on and we're like, okay, okay, we're going to move on to the next topic. And, and then, uh, you know, Mike, Mike started getting really agitated. You could see it in his seat. He started <laughs> moving around. And, and he, he, he said, you know, that's not acceptable. And that really changed the entire meeting. I thought we were going to go over here somewhere. And we, we, we spent the whole meeting talking about the Middle East and special missions and... And I realized that this week, that changed my whole week as well. You know, it has been uh, one of those Hananiah talks where I just think about it every day. I've been a little agitated at home. And, and I realized at the end of the week here, why was Mike so different than the rest of us? And I, w I wasn't the one who said it, but I was in the same boat as that guy. You ever been there, right? You're not the one who says the thing that's not spiritual, but you're right with the person that says the thing that's not? Yeah, yeah. so I was right there. And I, I remember thinking, you know, who's going to make the phone call over there afterwards? Not me. I'm not going to call up Mafid. I don't even, never met him. Say, bro, I just want to tell you how we did on our special missions. That, that would be Mike. He's, he would be the one on the other end of that phone. And I started thinking, wow, that's a lot different when you're the one on the other end of the phone. You know, the burden I want to give to you today is that we're all on the other end of that phone. We're all making that call. We're going to have a big conference call next week. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But that changed my view because it wasn't just those 
disciples over in the Middle East, they were my brothers over in the Middle East that I'm going to talk to. And we've done some wrestling and some, some prayer, praying and, and getting our hearts right. Because this is our wall here, right? These are our singles. We're, we're going to defend the singles, right, in our church. Yeah. We're going to do whatever we need to do to keep, get them to heaven. Here's our crazy teens. That is Cameron in the middle there. I don't know if you can see her. The picture's not too clear. There's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that all of you have poured out into your kids. There's nothing that you wouldn't do to get them to heaven. There's no cost too high. You know, there's some of you that get up at oh dark 30 to have quiet times with your kids. You know, there's others of you that are tired after work and are calling other brothers to get prayers and get help with your kids. There's others that drive an hour to go all the way to Cliff Weeks' house to get time to study the Bible with your kids. You know, we had a great study with Jacob today. But the thing that was so inspiring to me was Jacob, yes, but was Jeff also. And he's sharing about how he's ready to do whatever God wants him to do. And just passing that down to Jacob. And I go, man, that's what I get excited about. Yeah. Oh. That's what we're ready to die for. Because they're families. They're, they're, they're your kids and they're mine. It says, remember the instruction you gave your servant Moses, saying, if you're faithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if your exiled people are at the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them back to this place. I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. They are your servants and your people, whom you redeemed by your great strength with the mighty hand. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant. And to... Sorry, I can't see lately. And to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this Man, I was cupbearer to the king. And every time I read that passage, I feel that pit in Nehemiah's stomach. Because it wasn't just a dream, it was actually today it was happening. It wasn't just, oh, we're going to go do this great thing for God. But it was that moment of truth. That he had to take a leap of faith. You know, if you're going to build your part of the wall, you're going to have to take more than one leap of faith. Amen. You know, for your marriage, you're going to have to take a leap of faith. Even when you don't know what you're doing, you're going to have to do it anyways. Just because the Bible says that's what you need to do. He was going back and said, God, you're going to bring us back no matter what, even when we repent, and I'm going to go for it. You know, so many of us, we have spiritual dreams, right? We want to do great things for God. We want Him to use us. But so many times it stops there. Because we're not willing to step out. We're not willing to put ourselves in that situation where we could get rejected or persecuted or whatever. But Nehemiah was ready to go. And he put himself out there. For the, to build that part of the wall. There's Danny and MJ and, and their kids. Danny is kind of our spiritual Nehemiah here in the desert. Right? It's not easy being Nehemiah. It's not. Some of you know what I'm talking about. James, Rick, some of you guys. Man, to hold up the wall... And to be God's person in a place. Not that they're not without sin and all that. We know that. But their role to lead us. I mean, that, that's, that's huge. The same way you feel it for your family, they feel it for all of your families. 
You know, Nehemiah was an inspiring guy because he stepped out in faith. And that's what we get to do. This sermon is not about special missions, just to let you know. This is about building your wall and stepping out in faith and, and building up whatever part of the wall that you're in. And not just having a great dream for God, but stepping out on faith. You know, here's the Amman church. And we're going to kind of switch gears and talk a little bit more about the Middle East here. But here's the Amman church camping in March. And they do a lot of camping over there. We heard about Danny and MJ's incredible camping trip. Uh, I don't know why they do a lot of camping over there, but it's probably because they can be a lot more free with their faith when they go out in the woods. They can scream and shout and dance all about and all that stuff. But that, those are the people that we're fighting for here. They're trying to build their part of the wall where they are. You know, and uh, as we think about that, Nehemiah, what he, he, his prayer and dependence on God was amazing. There were challenge after challenge after challenge. And in every way, it says he prayed and fasted and wept for days. You know, just because hard things come our way, we have a choice whether we're going to handle them ourselves or whether we're going to handle them with God. You might think, well, he was forced to go to God. No, he wasn't forced to go to God. He chose to go to God. You know, sometimes so many things come at us that we take them all on ourselves and we get so stressed and we get so overwhelmed and we start becoming that person. But Nehemiah took everything to God. What a great example. His prayer and dependence on God. In chapter 4 and verse 7. Oh no. Got these out of order here. In Nehemiah 1.4. It says, when I heard these things, I sat down and wept for some days and mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. In chapter 2, when he went before the king, he says, the king said to me, what is it you want? Then I prayed to the God of heaven and I answered the king. If it pleases the king, your servant has found favor in his sight. Let him send me back to my city in Judah where my ancestors are buried so I can rebuild it. And he asked for the king to pay for it, and he asked for protection, and he asked for all these bold things. And he went back to build God's wall. But don't forget in that moment, God help me. Come on, God. He was already out there. It was going to go one way or the other, but he still knew that God was the one leading him. And God is the one that's leading us in an amazing way. You know, this morning I had a geography lesson, or last night and this morning. I listened to a 12-minute YouTube video done by a high school teacher that probably thought no one would ever look at this video to learn the different countries of the Middle East. You know, that was the first time in 44 years that I had ever done that. I had never sat down and memorized where they are and what the names are of all the countries of the Middle East. And if you test me today, I'll probably know where they are. Hopefully I'll remember them forever. But that would be some good homework for you. If this is our part of the wall, it's good to actually know what countries are in our part of the wall and know where they are. When all the, because to me, if you're like me, most Americans kind of like, well, it's just kind of over there somewhere. <laughs> just over there, the Persian Gulf and Iran and all that stuff. It's just there, you know, over that way. I had no idea where all these countries were. You know, there's th th 321 Muslims in the Middle East and Northern Africa. So that's basically like a United States population. And they have three ministry couples and two single interns for the entire United States. If you just kind of picture that, 
That would be half of our IE staff kind of trying to reach out to the entire nation that we live in. That's not, I'm not trying to make you feel guilty, really. There's a lot of you that have saved every month this year and put aside money that you could have spent on whatever and set it aside to build that part of the wall. And I want to commend you for that. That's awesome. I just want to put the need out there. The need is neither good nor bad. It's just the need is what it is. You know, there's 1.6 billion Muslims in the world. 25% of the world. And I believe they're going to have to be converted by converted Muslims. So whether that's part of our world, Middle East region or not, that's still going to be our, uh, part of what we're doing. To send people all over the world, and a lot of them are over in China and Indonesia and I India, which I just learned yesterday. So you can catch up to my knowledge here, too. <laughs> You know, I uh, want us to hear a minute, uh, just 25 seconds uh, of some of the preaching at the Middle East Conference. It's uh, Mofid and, and, and a sister that was, I think, translating. Hopefully this will work. <laughs> زواج لا يتزعزع لم بعرف دوري كزوج شوفوا الكتاب المقدس يعلمنا ان الزوج All right. Anybody get that? No. I didn't either. But at least you get the idea. Yeah. They're preaching over there. They don't have really great technology as you could see. It was probably like 360 definition there but they're over there preaching the word and I want us to be able to connect with the need which we talked about earlier this is our need it's ten times our, our weekly plus ten times our weekly plus our weekly and in my mind it's eleven times Okay, in case there's any confusion there. And then this week, what we realized in our staff meeting and in the 24 hours after that, is that we are kind of behind where we were last year. And so the need is the 11 times plus $200 more per family. That's, kind of, that's what the need is. We want to put the need before you. And then I want to take you on a little exercise. Okay, say you had, let me turn this off because I know you're going to be looking at that the whole time. One of these buttons will do it. Okay, I'll do it there. Okay, where do you, say you were going to go somewhere with your money. Where would you want to go? Paris. Okay, you want to go to, two people want to go to Paris, France. All right. So you, you get excited, you huddle up after church with your family, say, guess what, we're going to go to Paris. Okay, now how many people can just go home and buy the tickets and reserve the hotel tonight? How many people can do that? No? Okay. All right, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to go, we're going to set aside $300 a month. Maybe you need, we're going to set us. we want to have a really good time. We're going to set aside $400 a month. And we're, your family's going to go to Paris. And so every month you're going to put that aside and how are you going to feel about that? You're going to feel pretty good about it, right? You're going to get that. You're going to be like, yes, I'm going to Paris. So then say somebody comes along and says, hey, I need to borrow some of that 400 for whatever. What are you going to do? I'm sorry, get away from me, this is for Paris, right? So back off, okay, if I have to eat a few more peanut butter and jellies this week, if I could probably do that for a whole year maybe if I want to get there bad enough to Paris, all right? So you got that every month. Some of you have been doing that every month. So then say you get down to the 11th month and you realize instead of $4,800, it's going to cost $5,300. So now you have a dilemma. Okay, we've been doing this for 11 months. We have our $400 for the 12th month here. We don't want to go in debt because that's not good, right? We learned that. 
So what do we do? Don't go. There is no way in the world that I'm not going to Paris <laughs> after 12 months of raising all that money. I'm going to find $500 because we're going to Paris. And that's a good thing. You know what? On that phone call next Monday night, they're going to be a whole lot more excited about the good news than they are going to care whether you went to Paris. There's going to be a lot more rejoicing over that phone call than over however much fun you're going to have in Paris. All those pictures of the Eiffel Tower and at the Louvre. And, man, I went to the Louvre. It is so overrated. <laughs> Sorry if I had to reveal myself there. <laughs> that was not my place. Paris is not my place where I would want to go. But you're going there because you saved up the money for it. So now we're on the 11th month and we're trying to go to the Middle East. And there's no way we're not going. And half the money is here for Danielle and I and Stuart and Ashley Maines. You know, so the local wall is here also. So I don't want to go that way either, right? You know what I mean? That's not a good way. We're not, our jobs aren't on the line or anything, but just we don't want to do that. Right. You know, I was just thinking this week, they probably would like to hire somebody too. That's just a thought. You know, they probably need a lot more than we're, I'm fired up for what you're doing. But there's the whole nation over there, right? The whole United States over in the Middle East. You're the only ones that understand what that means. The 321 million people. You know, so I want us to wrestle with that this week. I want you to feel great. If you've been putting it aside every month, Feel awesome! God is not down on you. The need is just a little bit more. You know, and for some of us, I want to help us too. Because this is not a surprise for all of us. If you're a new Christian and this is your first time through, woohoo! Throw a party, do what you can, we're fired up for you. But this is, for some of us, every year we get that same feeling. I wish I would have been ready for this. I wish this didn't sneak up on me. Guess what? It didn't. Right. It didn't sneak up on any of us. We knew it. Next year, guess what? It's going to come. May 31st, June 1st, May 28th, something like that. So what does that mean? That's one week contribution every month to build the Middle East wall. That's what it practically means. So now you go back and you get your budget and you start with your conviction. You start with your conviction. Do I really care about that wall? Do I care enough to bam, 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 bam to make that happen? You know, we read that scripture, Matthew 28, to reach all nations. You know, there is such a little bit of my life that has to do with all nations. I mean, maybe I'll meet somebody here in the desert that will go to another country, and that's happened. I don't know with whom, but I know that's happened. I know the Mechamsons are going to Sweden and Norway, and that's going to make disciples of all nations, but in, this is really our one thing. To demonstrate that our dream is not just a dream, but we're actually going to jump off. That we're actually going to do that. We're serious about this. And so let me take my minister hat off for just a second, okay? I'm just going to put that right here. All right, I'm just going to be a regular brother in the church right now. If I'm somebody who, said, who sacrificed all those things all year, 
to build up our part of the wall and your part of the wall and your part of the wall and your part of the wall and you didn't that's not cool as a part of the team that's not cool and I know things happen and you know you unexpected things happen but we're all a team you know, when I take off my minister hat, I could say a few things that I don't say with my minister hat on. Because <laughs> when I'm on a team and there's somebody who's spiritually slacking, I'm not fired up. And I see a lot of heads because there's a lot of people that feel that way. And they want, man, they want all of us to sacrifice. Man, let's do it together. Then we're going to get the wall job done. Not just a little bit here, a little bit there. Not just you're committed and I'm not. And yeah, we want to help you. If you're not there, we want to help you. We're committed to you. We will die for you to help you in your faith. And I'm not talking about special missions. I'm talking about being wholehearted. About giving up yourself for somebody else. You know, why I haven't... A long time ago when I was in campus ministry, the campus minister asked me a simple question. How do you, how do you become fruitful? And I said, I have no idea. And he says, it takes a lot of love. It takes laying yourself down for someone else. And that's all I'm talking about. You know, to see the wall build, it takes laying ourselves down. Spiritually, financially, fasting, whatever. Because we want the kingdom to grow. And I'm out of time. I'll put my hat back on. I'm out of time. <laughs> Random brother, he doesn't care how much time he takes a lot of times. So I want you to hear this. Nobody's down on anybody. This is not a bad thing, everything that was said today. This is to help us to be a part of the wall. This is to help us be there for our brothers and sisters. I'm praying that some of you will be able to go over there. And be able to see the looks on their faces when they know that you're from here. Some of us have experienced that in different places. Man, if you're one of those people, you'll never struggle with this again. You know, yet last night I sent out some emails to some of the church leaders over there. And just having them pray for this time and I had it right with me on my phone and just encouraging them and saying hey we're taking up our special missions next week please pray for us and here's a brother uh, Brian Peters in Bahrain he doesn't sound very uh, Middle Eastern to me uh, so probably you know we need to have enough money to ultimately replace Brian Peters with somebody who's Middle Eastern but listen to what he said in reply. He said, Thank you for this email. I am encouraged by your love and serving heart. Please do thank all the Desert Cities Church of Christ on behalf of the Bahrain Church of Christ for your generous hearts and keeping us in your prayers. We will be praying for all of you with a special missions contribution. The Kids' Kingdom song, Building Up the Kingdom, comes to mind as you mentioned the topic of your lesson on Nehemiah 1 through 6. And you and Desert Cities are truly helping us in the Middle East to build His Kingdom, and it is inspiring. Thank you once again for your love and prayers in Christ, Brian Peters. And so as, you, as we leave and as you think about this, I pray that you can sing that song that we sing with every single kid, Building Up the Kingdom. And know that ultimately that's what you're a part of. And that God is so pl pleased with you. Thank you. Amen. Awesome.